Hey all, welcome to another Journeys with Jim. My name is Jim Oberlander and today we're going to be talking about an often confusing concept uh, when it's being taught the first couple of times. So I want to hopefully break down this topic of electrolyte concentration in the body uh, so that it's understandable. We're going to be using some Hawaiian punch and some water to uh, simulate the electrolyte itself and then the volume of water or blood that it's being diluted in. Uh, the, and that's, that's the key misunderstanding is a lot of students think that when we give you a lab value of potassium 3.9, okay, that's normal, but they think that it's just a, a straight amount of potassium or sodium or calcium or whatever. And it's not. It's how much of this is being diluted by a certain amount of water. So those are the two impacts. So in order to have a high concentration of an electrolyte, you either have the same volume being compared. So if I were to do this and roughly this, Okay, same amount of water in order to have a hypertonic solution. I would have to put a, a whole lot of sodium or potassium in this one in comparison with this one. So that's just changing the amount that you take in or excrete of that electrolyte through sweating it off or vomiting or diarrhea or all that fun stuff. Okay, so that or the kidneys, the kidneys excreting certain amounts, okay? So that's, that's the electrolyte. The other thing that could change is the actual amount of water. So say in comparison, we've got somebody who is having a lot of solution compared to somebody that has just a little bit. I can put the same amount of electrolyte in this one in comparison with this one okay so if I put the same amount in both I don't think I've got much in this one there we go So if I put the same amount of sol solute, the, the electrolyte, in each glass, the difference isn't the amount of solute, it's the amount of water. And you can see that one is much darker or much more concentrated than the other. So that's the two, two key differences, amount of solution and the amount of solute. You change either one and or both and you're going to have a change in concentration. The other thing I want you to uh, realize is that those electrolyte values, the sodium, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, in the blood all have their own symptoms, their own manifestations um, alone. So if you have too little calcium in the blood, you're hypocalcemic in far, as far as concentration goes. Um, that's looked at as uh, having it, symptoms of tetany and neuromuscular irritability and stuff like that. Versus if your blood is hypertonic, okay, hypercalcemic, okay, you're going to end up having weakness and fatigue and symptoms like that. Decreased neuromuscular irritability. You take sodium. Where sodium goes, water follows. Now, with that, it's not just that simple. We're talking about, in that regards, uh, the difference between the vascular concentration and the cellular concentration. So let's look at that a little bit in terms of sodium. Okay? Let's say that this is my cell and this is my blood vessels. And my blood vessels have taken on a whole lot more fluid. So now my blood vessels are hypo tonic. The sodium level is going to be low, okay, because they've taken on too much fluid. 
Now a symptom with that is going to be high blood pressure, bradycardia, um, neuromuscular complications because you're diluting the sodium because too much water, okay? Now, when you have too much water and the sodium is dilute, hypo, hippo, the cells. So we're going to take some of that solution and we're going to pour it in the cells until those concentrations, okay, and it's going to go back and forth. It's not just fluid here. It's also the sodium. They're trying to get the sodium concentration to balance off. So sodium is going to move, water is going to move, and the cells are going to swell, okay, trying to find a balance in that concentration, all right, which is going to affect the symptoms as well. We're hopefully going to come back to a normal volume, normal concentration in the blood, and the cells will be adjusted as well. And it's this constant balance for homeostasis, all right? So that's hypotonic. That's possibly with fluid, too much fluid. Now I want to show you another issue with hypotonic. Okay. Now what if um, it wasn't uh, fluid loss, but it was or, uh, fluid gain, but it was sodium lost? So you have a certain amount of water, okay, and then you have your cells. Now let's look at it this way. At one point, they were the same. Flu concentration in the, in the vessels and in the cells, they're the same. Now let's take some of the sodium away. Well, I can't really take the Kool-Aid out of here, but what if I pulled some of that sodium out of the vessels? Okay? pulled some of the sodium out, it would essentially be the same thing. You would have a hypotonic solution where you would again, it's not the fluid issue, it's the concentration, okay? Again, it's how much sodium was in it. So again, the same thing would happen. Hypotonic, not, re not revolving around the volume, but you would end up, again, the vessels putting fluid in the cells, and you would have cells swelling hypo hippo All right so that's hypotonic whether it's the too much fluid diluting it out or taking the sodium out it's going to change that concentration okay now i want to look at hypertonic hypertonic All right so hypertonic in the vessels no it's good all right, so we have our cell and our vessels. When you're in a hypertonic state in the blood vessels, your body wants to try and dilute this out so that you don't have the manifestations of being hypertonic, okay? So the cells are going to shrink. They're gonna try and balance a whole bunch of cells are gonna try and pour in here, and I know it's not gonna do a perfect job, but it diluted it out a little bit, okay? It's going to keep, the body's going to try and get rid of some of the fluid. It's going to try and dilute it out. It's going to pull fluids from the cells to try and balance that off. Now look at what happened in a hypertonic situation, hypernatremia, okay? You just, add, you just pulled fluid, boom, there it is, all right? You most definitely will have hypertension. You're going to have neuromuscular, um, neurological complications because you're hypertonic, you're also fluid overloaded, you're going to have swelling, you're going to have edema, you're going to have a whole bunch of things because all this fluid just shifted trying to balance out the hypertonic situation. Now, originally these volumes started at the same level, but because of the situation of too much sodium, maybe we ate too much sodium, we retained too much sodium, okay, from our diet, our body is trying to balance that off by pulling fluid into the vessels, which leads to, again, the symptoms, hypertension, and, and issues with the fluid and edema and all that kind of stuff. Okay, But I want you to take a look at another possibility for a hypertonic issue. What happens if we go running, Okay, just like in the previous Journey with Jim? 
okay? I was running on a treadmill and maybe I wasn't hydrating well enough, okay? And so, hmm, not bad. So instead of the issue being the amount of sodium that I'm taking in, instead, it's that I lost a whole bunch of water, okay? I, I sweated it off, I didn't sweat it off in exactly the same concentration. Uh, maybe there's some disease processes that are leading to the fluid um, excretion. And now I have my blood vessel, okay, that's more concentrated than my cells simply because I lost fluid, okay? So with that, now what happens? If this is my system, I'm going to be hypotensive, all right? I'm going to have issues with uh, neuromuscular functioning again because it's still a hypertonic solution. It's hypernatremic. And again, because this is hyper, the cells are going to shrink. Now, maybe they were perfectly fine until I lost some fluids, okay? I lost some fluids, and the body's going to try and balance out those concentrations by moving fluid from the cells into the blood vessels to try and balance off that solution to make it normal again okay to to compensate for that fluid loss so that's two issues we have hypertonic and hypotonic we have symptoms that go along with the electrolyte imbalance itself as well as the fluid issues that go along with the sodium um, so that's what I want you to understand about the manifestations. When you look through those manifestations, are they as a result of the fluid shift because of the concentration of sodium specifically? Or is it not the fluid, but it's our intake or excretion of sodium? All right, so maybe it's a fluid movement, maybe it's a sodium issue. Potassium issue, fluid issue, okay? So... As you're thinking about concentrations, as you're thinking about these electrolytes, as you're thinking about the manifestations, make sure you understand the difference of the symptoms, the manifestations, as a result of too much or too little, or too much or too little. I hope that helps clarify it a little bit, especially as you go and you look into your text, you look into your books a little bit more, that maybe the manifestations will jump out a little bit more as a result of either the fluid or the electrolyte responses. Have a great day, and I hope you'll join me on another Journeys with Jim. Adios.